Well, however, you live in a rather interesting time where we live in a time that I call the age of seduction of neuroscience. And I took this example of this book called The Science of Learning, which especially deals with a lot of experience and research based on this super big topic that is science of learning. And that here shows us an example of how this word, neuroscience, sometimes it slightly distorts what we want to learn about learning. They cite a work that is a work done by the researcher Dina Weber that appears here, and this is a work from the year 2008. It is quite old, from the Department of Psychology from Yale University. And what did they find? That exists a growing tendency in society since the time to want to explain the behavior and the human experience through this research lens of this discipline very specific that is called neuroscience. This is self-evident a bit with these explanations They sound like neuroscientists and have like neurojargon, so to speak. But what they wonder, well, how seductive and powerful can these be explanations? So in the research they found that people are more likely to classify as good explanations about psychology and learning those that are accompanied by neuroscientific jargon that is, terms used by neuroscientists in their work research. On the other hand, even if the neuroscientific information was false or totally made up, most people thought this information was correct. A little bit of context. This research was done at this university with groups mainly freshmen. And this effect that could be called this of the seduction of neuroscience is more pronounced when the original explanation is considered weak and low level, that is, a totally superficial explanation is strengthened by incorporating scientific jargon. And even more if there are beginner people, that's why I said freshmen, who has some slight knowledge of neuroscientific, these false explanations are accompanied by brain imaging, for example, that a brain study technique tends to fall more into the trap that such evidence is correct. And well, and as expected, the only group of people who do not believe these false explanations embellished with neuroscientific jargon are the experts, the people who have experience in the area. And well, that does not create a problem in the current era because it seems that everything that is neuroscience has a certain validity. So this generates what I call the magic of neuroscience today in education, which seems to be everywhere. I know that you have seen in multiple instances of training in books concepts like, for example, there we have neurohappiness, there we have neuroction, educational neuroscience, neurothics, neuromusic, neurodidactics, contingent on thinking about those things, especially for this course, Neuroscience applied to I don't know what, neuromarketing, for example, neuromarketing and neuroeconomics. So that all these terms have invaded not only the field of education, but the current culture. That, as a professional neuroscientist, it never ceases to call my attention how the neuroscience has colonized the field of training from the sale of books. And the truth is that neuroscience is a science, 
as it says the name of it, and it is not an application. The fact that we take some element like this isolated that comes from neuroscientific evidence in the context of what research is neuroscientific science does not mean that we can take it and apply it directly to what is daily life. That's not even an application. That doesn't validate it as something relative to neuroscience. 